So, hi everyone, welcome to our art chat. Art chats are a way for the Ringling to stay connected to our community one conversation at a time. I'll be choosing a work of art tailored to each of my guests, all of whom offer a unique perspective on the current coronavirus crisis and how it has personally impacted them. Today, my guest is Mark Steinwachs. Mark was born in Buffalo, New York, and has lived in Sarasota since the mid-1990s. He writes short stories, which have appeared in Tampa Review, Cut Bank, and other journals, was a writing fellow and instructor at The Ohio State University, and is a contributing editor at Story Magazine. Mark, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure to be here. So happy to have you. So first things first, um, this is a painting that maybe you've seen before, but you didn't know that it was going to be the one I've selected for you. So yeah, I'd like to just get your take on this painting. How would you describe this scene? What's going on here? Um, we see an older man writing um, mm -hmm. with an angel on his shoulder. Um, you know, I, I immediately makes me think of the muse, but also um, kind of what I was thinking along the lines. When you invited me, um, I began to really think about what writing does and this, you know, how, it, how we're in this sort of how we live in the moment, but writing kind of connects us to something kind of bigger and eternal and, you know, some would say divine. So there's something here of this sort of partnership between sort of the living being and something sort of bigger than, than them. That's what I immediately am keying into. That's a, such a such a beautiful description. I love that. Yeah, I think for me, it's that sort of really the tenderness, the way that the angel's resting his hand on the older man's shoulder, that sort of really that, that closeness between the two, the intimacy. Um, so this painting uh, is of, of St. Matthew and an angel. Uh, so St. Matthew is ostensibly writing the gospels, but he's receiving help, like you, you've said, from this divine angel. So the angel maybe functions sort of as a stand-in for divine guidance or divine inspiration. So thinking about the idea of inspiration um, that you've sort of alluded to, what inspires you as a writer? And what are you thinking about now? What are you inspired by now in this very strange moment as you write? Um, <laughs> what inspires me is, um, I definitely appreciate writing that sort of puts you back into your life, that sort of gets you back into the moment, into the present, and kind of wakes you up, sort of shakes you out of, um, what what's typically going on and what's so interesting about my thoughts about writing now are you know the virus has sort of done that it's shaken us out of our routine it's done some of the work that we think writing usually does um so what's inspired i'm finding it actually very difficult to read at the moment i can mm. even if it's a few, I, I was telling a friend even if a poem's 10 lines i'll get to the third line and be like i can't do this <laughs> um but um but what what writing for me is definitely connection and that's definitely a thing that that I that I think is still really valuable no matter how many other things are going on yeah in, absolutely in absolutely and and I think we look as society we look to writers to sort of help us frame and understand the contemporary moment as we are living it I think writers generally tend to be able to narrate our lives in real time with a greater sense of perspective than the average person may have. So I'm, I'm turning to you as sort of our sage here as our resident writer. Um, how are you making sense of this unprecedented time? And maybe are there any precedents in literature, in writing that come to mind? Um, yeah, so I'm making a lot of, I, I feel like lyric poetry and music can really speak to a moment more quickly than narrative. I feel like narrative, mm -hmm what's difficult about reading stories for me is you need the whole story um, to really sort of have to know where things end or have to have a sense of where we are. And in a lot of ways, things are shifting. You know, you check your phone every hour and things are shifting so quickly mm -hmm. that you don't know. Um, and the, what was the second part of the question? So just thinking about sort of, are there any precedents in literature or writing that come to mind that sort of feel relevant or speak to this moment that, that you've been thinking about or reading? Yeah, Catherine Ann Porter has a, a long story, sort of a short novel called P Pale Horse, Pale Rider that's about the 1918 flu epidemic. Mm -hmm. And it's written in this um, very fevered, beautiful language um, that, that I have reread in this time. And it definitely 
resonates resonates for me. Um, but as a writer, I think it's more about just recording what's going on in the moment. Sort of all you can do is record. You might not know the whole picture, but you can at least put down in journal entries. And I'm just sort of like a magpie, just gathering <laughs> what sort of whatever impression that I have, whatever's sort of happening. And it helps. It sort of it does two things. It sort of gets it out of your system a little bit. It sort of gets it out of your body. Mm -hmm. And it lets you know what you're thinking and feeling, you know, you might be much more frightened than you thought or more strong than you thought, you know, and sometimes just writing down your feelings or what's sort of going on in the moment really helps to kind of get it out, but also send it back to you. Mm. So I found that uh, there are a lot of limits to what narrative can do right now in writing, but those, those virtues are still there to just put something down, get a record of what's happening. So I imagine you probably are in the habit of writing and journaling and just chronicling all of your thoughts in the written form on a regular basis. For someone that has never kept a journal or a diary, but maybe wants to start documenting this moment, do you have any tips or recommendations to, to sort of make it a, a sustainable habit? Um, yeah, I think the key is just to start. To, mm -hmm. um, to I would just encourage people to make something. And it can be really simple. And maybe it doesn't start with writing. Maybe you draw a map of your childhood home and sort of take your ch take your kid through a tour of it or or just write down to yourself what happened in what room who used to hang out at the tv and what time you know mom and dad went to bed or you know whatever mm -hmm. that's kind of a way to start you could write a list of your favorite teachers or who meant the most to you and what year of your life you know you can start with kind of lists um or, or also having an audience helps, you know, write a letter to a friend, get in a, maybe a regular habit of sending a postcard every day to mm -hmm. a different person. Um, and I think the simpler you keep it and maybe even sometimes limiting it, if you want to start a journal, only let yourself write five lines of what happened today mm -hmm. um, or set a time limit. How much can I write? Like, I'll give myself five or 10 minutes and write as much as I possibly can and then I'm done. Those kind of things they help. Some, uh, writing gives structure to things. So to set yourself up with some kind of structure is definitely a way, a way to start. Yeah, no, I love that. And now if, if I pick up the habit or, or start this, I'm going to imagine you being this angel over my shoulder, guiding me <laughs> to be a more productive writer as I spend time kind of chronicling this, this moment. Yeah. So I want to talk and, a oh, go, sorry, go ahead. I, I, well, and so you've sort of referred back to the painting. And I guess some things that strike me as I look at it more are, you know, writing is work. You see St. Matthew, it doesn't, I mean, he's, he's not exactly comforted by the work. It looks, it's hard mm -hmm. work. You can mm -hmm. see sort of the labor in his body, but, but there's also this lightness to it. I mean, he is summoning the angel and the angel has arrived. So a lot of times when you show up to do the work, um, you do also get lifted up by the work. So there's this, and there's this dichotomy to the practice and there's a lot of dichotomy to like, what you'll actually end up with. You know, you always start out trying to do one thing and end up doing something else. So mm -hmm. um, this really captures the sort of two sides of of writing. Yeah, and I think there's sort of the, these dichotomies in the painting too, in terms of the red and the green, the white and the black, the dark and the light, um, you know. And, and for me, it feels like a very solitary painting. Obviously the angel is there, whether it's a metaphor for divine inspiration or a physical being. Um, but then you have this just sort of dark background and, and St. Matthew sort of sitting alone. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, about process. I tend to think of writing as a solitary process, but I'm wondering, is that the case for you? What is your process like? And has the virus and, and being stuck at home impacted your process at all? It has a little bit. I typically have to leave the house. I don't know why, but I have to leave the house to write. It mm -hmm. sort of creates an event. And then uh, uh, then I'm out of the house, usually at a library writing, and then I'm home and I'm not working. So blurring that line is difficult. I've definitely tried to set up a schedule where it's like, now I'm working on it. Um, so sort of turn your mind on and turn your mind off. But it's it definitely comes and goes, you know, good days mm -hmm. and bad days, but it really is about showing up. It is, a writing is an act of faith that like you're showing up and you have hope for that something will come of that moment and there's something inherent like that this will matter you know that i will that that someone will read this or that i will 
be able to look back on this one day and 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 have it be a record of this moment. Um, I keep losing the second part to your question, but that's sort of what. what no, that no, that answered it perfectly. I, yeah, just talking about your process and if the virus has changed it at all, and and yeah, you being stuck at home and how that's impacted it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so. The last, I just wanted to give the, the last word to you, Mark. What message do you have for anyone listening to this, this art chat? Um, my thought really was to make something, mm -hmm. whether, and, and to save as much as you can. I mean, believe it or not, you are going to want to remember this moment, you know, the good and the bad of it. And whether it's as simple as, you know, keeping the list of meals that you've made or, um, you know, just sort of, keeping as much of a record or just living in the moment as much as you can, because it's funny what, you know, writing has to happen in the moment. It's a performance, but strangely, it sort of connects you to the past and the future. You know, it, it's the way to make the present kind of tap into something that will, that's sort of, you bring along your entire history and it kind of lasts beyond you, ideally. You know, that's why we love the arts in that, you know, someone painted this so many years ago and yet, you know, we can bring it back to life in the present by looking at it, by talking about it. So I would encourage people just to make things and to really, especially if you're home with other people, use it as an opportunity to connect with other people, have it be something that you're all doing together in your own way or together as a group project. Um, that would be, that would be my, my one thought to get us through. Wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm certainly feeling inspired and ready to go start some some writing. Um, so thank you so much, Mark. It was wonderful to talk to you. Um, best of luck with, with your own writing and, and reading, and I hope you stay safe and healthy. And again, thank you so much for your time. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to talk to you, and I look forward to your future conversations.